I'm Ronnie Walsh and this is Extrapreneurs, the show about women in business and the issues and opportunities they face. Today we're talking about hiring for your organization, how to get that hiring process right because there's nothing worse when it goes wrong. We'll also look at marketing for larger businesses. What's the strategy you need to have in place and how do you keep that customer funnel filled? We'll also talk about your health and wellness at work, how you can be healthy and well while you're at your desk. So there's a lot to talk about today, so stick with us. We'll be right back after the break. Rogers TV produces 100% local community programming. It's an exciting volunteer experience. We train hundreds of volunteers to work side by side with professional television producers. No experience required. If you'd like to volunteer, visit RogersTV.com. The people in your business are your business. Hiring the right people can deliver for your customer and help build your brand. But for entrepreneurs and organizations, large, medium or small, it's often a struggle hiring the right person. Jess Chapman is the owner of E3 Consulting and helps people find uh, the right fit for their organization. Jess, thanks for being here. Thank you. What are the types of things that leaders, business leaders should be looking for when they're hiring? So there's two things you want to pay attention to. Um, the first is job fit. So can the person do the job you want them to do proficiently? And the second, which is a bit more challenging, is organisational fit. Is that person going to be the right fit for your organisation, your culture, your values? And so you need both of those if you want someone to be successful in your organisation long term. So how do you determine if they're the right fit for either one of those buckets, I right. guess. So job fit is about, can the person do the job? So you're looking at experience, skills, you know, proficiency. So screening the resume, questions you might ask in the interview around past things that they've done, what accomplishments they have, uh, and the reference checks you do will help you know if the person can do the job uh, effectively. You can also do assessments and things in an interview if you want to. Organisational fit is a little harder, um, but you're assessing against your own culture and values, so you need to know what they are, firstly. Uh, and then you can also ask questions in an interview about the environment in which somebody thrives in and how that fits with your organisation. Uh, and you can do more activities like meets and greets and have more people involved in the interview process to get a better sense of how that person works with the type of people you already have. Where should people be looking to find their talent and where shouldn't they be looking to find their talent? So the traditional places still apply, newspaper ads, uh, career sites, etc. But today, if you're not on social media, you're missing out on a large portion of your audience. So we know about 40% of Canadians go online on, onto social media to look for jobs. Um, so you need to be posting your positions there and be looking for talent there. The other thing about social media is you'll you've got a better chance of uh, catching what we call the passive candidate. So there are people out there who aren't actively looking for a job, um, but would be potentially interested in your position. So they're not going to necessarily go on a career site to look at jobs, but if it's on social media where they already are, they may be interested in click through to your advertisement. So that's definitely something to do. The other thing not to miss, particularly as a small business, is referral. So somebody referring a talented person to a job likely already knows your business. They likely already know the position you're recruited for. So they're not going to recommend somebody who's not a fit, right? They're going to recommend someone they think might be a fit for your organization. And for a small business who might not have the same brand reach, mm -hmm. getting referrals can be a good source of talent for the organization. And save some money on recruitment. Yes. Speaking of, of social media and posting the jobs though, uh, how much do social media profiles and, and comments influence that hiring process? So we know from research that somewhere between 50 and 70 percent of organizations use social media to check on candidates. That's a, that's a lot. Um, but it's more tangly than you might think. So as an employee 
employer, you might be thinking, okay, I have someone who's applied to work with us. I'm going to go and have a look at who they are in real life. I'm going to look at their profile. Um, and that would seem sensible. So you might see their qualifications or something about their background and their schooling. The problem is that you're also likely to become privy to information that's not pertinent to the recruitment process. And that's a challenge. So you might even find out information that's in within what we call the protected grounds. So you could find out someone's trying for a baby, or you could find out they have a disability. And those things are not pertinent to hiring and can bias the uh, interview process. So it's not as simple as saying, I'm going to nip onto Facebook and have a look at someone's profile. You have to have a real clear plan about what you're doing. Uh, you should absolutely check the legislation in your province, because there are privacy legislation rules around this. Um, and if you are thinking about using social media to do that type of check, uh, the Office of the Privacy Commissioner has some guidelines that you should look at before you do that. Right. Now, on the other side, you're the candidate applying. Whether you agree with it or don't agree with it, it's clearly happening. So check your profile, look at your privacy settings, and don't post anything on your profile that you wouldn't want the general public to be able to consume. Yes, you still often see that people say the comments are my own, but you know that's depending on who you talk to and which court case you're reviewing. Yes. <laughs> uh, but coming back to in investment, and entrepreneurs often have a, a limited budget when it comes to these types of things. What should they be investing in to find that right org fit? and role fit. Yeah. So, um, you know, the cost of getting recruitment wrong often far outweighs the cost of doing it right. But we often don't think about all the extra pieces of cost that happen when we get it wrong, because we think about the cost of posting a job and the cost of doing the interview. But there's also training, the time spent with the team, the impact on customers, the impact on your reputation. So it's really worth investing in getting recruitment right up front. Um, the biggest thing that causes people to actually hire the wrong fit is less to do with the process and more to do with speed. So when you need somebody quickly, you're more willing to overlook flaws in their their application and gaps in their proficiency because you need somebody now. So the better thing to think about is how do I plan out for the people I need? How far in advance can I start thinking about recruitment so that I'm not rushed in that process and I can hire the person who's the right fit for me? So do it right the first time or upfront, otherwise it's going to cost you more later. Yes. So you found the perfect candidate. They fit the org and they fit the role. Now what? How do you make sure you keep them? Well, recruitment is absolutely only the first step. So once you've found a great person, like you said, you've got to keep them. And that means the onboarding process. So a period of time, probably six months, sometimes a year following hiring, you are still ensuring that that person is going to be successful in your organization. So you want to be doing two things. You want to be reinforcing that you both made the right decision and you want to be setting them up to be as successful as quickly as possible. So thinking about things like, do they have all the right tools and equipment? Do they know who's who in your organization? Have you set some deliverables so you can measure whether they can deliver as fast as you were expecting. All of those things are an important part of the process. But if you just bring the person in and go, okay, there we go, you're awesome, you'll be fine, the chances are you're missing something to get them up to speed and have them delivering the way they could. All totally very helpful use and useful information, Jess. Really appreciate you coming in and sharing that and providing some insight about social media and, and the, the benefits of that for entrepreneurs. Thank you. You're welcome. Enlo has been supporting women entrepreneurs in Newfoundland and Labrador for more than 20 years. It's your goal to succeed in business. It's ours to make sure you do. Entrepreneurs is proudly supported by Invested Mama, moving you and your money forward. The internet is full of articles to market your startup or market your business online, but there is a void on information to market your business that's been around for a while. What do you do if, if you've been around for 5, 10, 15, 20 years? Well, there is an information gap, but we're here to fill that today. Sheldon Payne of Newfound Marketing is with me, and we're going to talk about how to market established businesses. Uh, what should businesses who've been around for a while be thinking about with their marketing strategies? Um, I think one of the most important things for today's business is to, um, if you don't have a measurement plan, it's very important to have one, um, right? Most 
established businesses should have one. Uh, however, if you do have one in place, I think it's very important as well to maybe revisit what it is that you're measuring. Um, over the last you know, five or six years since social media has been in place, we've been measuring metrics like likes and shares, um, but we need to be measuring more about the real, re real results and uh, you know, what's actually driving our business forward. And that informs what, what tactics you use, I guess. Um, so where should businesses be? What kind of platforms and, and content should be businesses be creating? The very first platform that any business should be focusing on is their own website. Um, you know, I think what happens today is that a lot of us focus on social media because that's where we're directed to focus our attention and that's where we spend a lot of our time. However, what we want to be able to do is that when we're sending people to our website, we need to make sure that people can easily do business with us as business owners. So that makes sure that we can, uh, people can contact us very easily. The information that we provide on our website is first viewable, viewable by a mobile device um, and also very easy to read and more and more video in today's space. So even biz businesses that have been around a long time still aren't getting that right? No, I think um, in most cases everyone tries to chase where, where everything is going and they're not looking at what's happening in their own, in their own backyard to kind of fix that um, and having a good email program and making sure that you're focused on your website first can really help you get those foundations down before you begin to go and adjust your strategy to focus on social media and paid media. So unless you get the fundamentals right, you're not going to do anything successfully. No. So budgets. Should you have uh, a specific budget every year uh, that's fixed or, or how, do you, how do you determine what you're investing? Uh, it certainly depends on the business. I think the more established businesses will have a fixed budget that they spend. Uh, we work with several clients who, d who do that. Um, but it's also important for businesses who maybe don't have that budget allocated to begin to allocate a budget for marketing. Uh, so you can really begin to understand how much you're spending and then how much your business is continuing to grow. And depending on the nature of your business, there might be an opportunity there to, as revenue grows, you begin to add in more budget for your business. Uh, let's also remember that things are costing more money today than they have in the past. Um, there's a lot of focus on creating content, and creating content usually involves getting people to film video. And filming video is not a cheap endeavor, uh, so that can increase the budget that you have as well. But making sure that you just allocate a budget uh, that you're going to spend to each and every year. Talked about free uh, <laughs> or more affordable social media. How should businesses be thinking about social media? Uh, I think one of the things that happens with social today is a lot of people think of social as a marketing first platform uh, for a business when in reality the people that follow your business on social um, they like they know you, they like you, and they trust you. So it's very important that you cater to them. Uh, so if they're sending you messages through Facebook, they're sending you messages through Instagram, make sure that you take the time to respond to them. Mm -hmm. And then they will actually become part of your marketing team because they will go and they will talk about you. So I think you get that foundation down first. And then from there, you begin to move into each of the platforms. If you're a small business, you would focus on one platform but have a presence everywhere and as your business grows then maybe you want to expand uh, and move attention from one platform to the next. And it's a tactic as part of the strategy not the strategy itself. I think people like you said they confuse that and think that that's the be all and end all. It's a great tool to have in your toolkit. Um, you talked about data and affordability and the, and the budgets. Um, but what about the voice of the customer? You talked about getting them engaged on those platforms. When do you know when to uh, fire that up in terms of your, your content strategy? Uh, great question. The, the easiest way there is that you're going to actually see more responses uh, for your business. And sometimes those responses are not normally going to be on Facebook or Instagram where you may begin to see them might be places like the Google reviews or if you're in the hospitality industry you may begin to see an uptake in TripAdvisor reviews and obviously if those are negative reviews you need to make adjustments and if they're positive reviews then obviously you need to make further adjustments as well and how can you expand on that and can you take what you're doing really well and kind of move it into other platforms like we talked about earlier. Not 
do everything, have a, a, a closer net instead of a wider net kind of thing. Focus and discipline will yeah. always help you get there. <laughs> thanks so much, Sheldon. This is really great advice. I really appreciate you coming in today. Ah, thanks again for having me. Rogers TV produces 100% local community programming. It's an exciting volunteer experience. We train hundreds of volunteers to work side by side with professional television producers. No experience required. If you'd like to volunteer, visit RogersTV.com. Entrepreneur's Health and Wellness segment is brought to you by A Holding Place, providing individual, couples, and family counseling. Do you take a break at work or do you plow right through your breaks in lunch hour? I think we're all guilty of this from time to time, but it can have a serious impact on your mental health and your physical well being. The importance of workplace wellness breaks uh, is more topical than ever. And here to talk about how we can maybe work those more consciously into our day is Tara Antle. She's the owner of the Healthy Balance Holistic Health Group. Tara, why should we be more focused on taking these workplace wellness breaks? It can actually help in the work world, but it can also help in our home life as well. If we barrel on through, at the end of the day, we're tired, lethargic, it can affect our productivity, and we go home, we're hungry, and think how we feel when we're at that point. We're not necessarily the happiest camper at the end of the day either. So when you're sat at your desk and you have, you know, maybe you have a scheduled work break, a morning or afternoon and lunch break, what should people be doing? Uh, it's easy to be tempted to plow right through. Absolutely. And, um, you know, a lot of times it's having our healthy snacks with us, ready to go. So if it's an orange, have it peeled the night before and in a container. So all we have to do is take the top off and make our healthy food convenient. Work world is really, really busy. So sometimes it could be looking at our schedule and planning where we're going to eat in between. So sometimes in between meetings or in between activities, in between clients, we can actually have that healthy snack in between there as well. A lot of people talk about downloading a specific app or setting calendar reminders to get up and walk or, or maybe take that healthy snack. How effective have you found that with your clients? Do, do those reminders work? Absolutely, because in the work world, every day is different. And every time there's a change in routine, it changes how we eat. So they are really good to have a reminder because we get caught up in the tasks and things that we have to do, the assignments that we're working on. So sometimes we don't really realize that we're hungry until we're starving. And that's kind of when we're beyond any point of control. We're super grumpy at that Absolutely. point. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not the best time to go ask for that raise. <laughs> I thought it wouldn't go too well. <laughs> so what types of workplace wellness initiatives can be found in businesses? And what should entrepreneurs and people running their own business be thinking about? There's all kinds of different ones. Uh, I find with a lot of the business I've worked with, it depends on the business for uniqueness. Um, sometimes with wellness programs, there's a monetary uh, reimbursement for uh, programming and uh, fitness equipment, things like that, that companies will pay back. Um, sometimes uh, I've gone into companies where they'll actually pay me to come in and actually go in and give a workplace wellness seminar. Uh, we've done team building exercises where we actually prepare snacks and uh, do teamwork as well while we're doing it. And then and have an educational session on it. I think it's a huge investment for companies to factor workplace wellness in. Um, you know, it really helps to increase productivity in the work world, reduce sick days, uh, increase staff morale even goes a long way. So it's really important that we have that give back and, uh, you know, if anything, it's kind of like uh, paying it forward that, you know, there is a return on investment and it's in the health of your employees, which there's nothing replaceable for that. Work can bring a lot of stress, and when you're running Absolutely. your own business, you know, like, you know entrepreneurs do, how, how can you, what kind of techniques can you incorporate to bring the, find the calm 
and the mindfulness. Absolutely. It is really important to factor mindfulness component in. Deep breathing is one of the simplest things. We can be in a meeting and be deep breathing. When we deep breathe, we cannot be in fight or flight mode at the same time, so it can actually help change hormonal response in the body and actually get the body out of fight and flight mode. It's a learned skill set. Um, I think taking the breaks and taking time for ourselves make a big difference and nourishing ourselves throughout the day time. I think with stress, we have external stress and internal stress. And a lot of times, if we don't manage the internal stress, it's like adding fuel to the fire for the external stress for coping mechanisms. So it's kind of like when it comes to fuel and energy uh, in the body, it's like a three-tiered system. If we fuel it properly from the foods that we're eating, like nature intended us to do, from our food, it's almost like we have full power, full energy. If, however, we have not fueled properly from the foods that we're eating, it's kind of like the power cuts out and we start running off generator. So yeah, we have some energy, but we're not quite where we should be. At that point in time, our body will start taking our own stores to burn for fuel and break it back down to glucose. And our body only likes to do that for a certain period of you know, time, keeping in mind that glucose is the main source of fuel and energy for our mind. So if our powerhouse is not fueled, that's not going to you know, help with productivity and clearness in the work world. Likewise, after a little bit of burning our own stores, our body says, help, hang on, enough of that. And at that point in time, it's like we start running off of, uh, you know, depleting our, our uh, generator and running off a battery supply. And at that point in time, our body needs something to stimulate itself, and that's where we start running off adrenaline and cortisol. And then you can have physical symptoms and things like that. Absolutely. So energy. We often think about, you know, getting up from your desk, touching your toes, stretching your arms, things like that. But what real kind of burst of energy can you create for yourself in your office without running around the block 50 times? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Which you what can't you do? do in some different weather. <laughs> How do you um, bring up that energy level aside from making sure that your food tank is, is fueled properly? It's fueled. So part of it is obviously uh, nourishment. Sleep hygiene is really, really important to make sure that we are getting restful sleep. Uh, you know, reducing back on caffeine eight hours before bedtime. A lot of people will say that caffeine doesn't uh, impact their sleep patterns because they're not waking up, but a lot of times it actually just keeps us out of a REM sleep so we don't end up with quality sleep. So sleep hygiene is really, really important as well. I think sometimes too, even laughter and music could be a, a good way to uh, get our energy up and our spirits. So finding things that give us that warm, fuzzy feeling. So it could be uh, things on the internet that have children and kittens. <laughs> <laughs> Might do Which it. Is popular. <laughs> um, but music therapy as well, we're seeing that the, the health benefits of that goes a long way. Right. Lots of apps, lots of music, a lot of options. But essentially, if I'm hearing you correctly, it does come down to boundaries and being true to those boundaries. Absolutely. And it's establishing those boundaries that we don't overdo it or push our limits too far. Um, and I think that's why, you know, health boundaries, um, you know, it's, it's okay to say no or, okay, give me five minutes and I'll be right with you. Uh, sometimes, um, you know, I could be in between clients, say, okay, you know what, I'll be with you in two minutes and I could just go in and have a little snack. I brought a magic bullet to work so that if I'm going into to a meeting, I can drink back my snack as opposed to eating my meetings. snack, and that's another way to do it as well to make Crunching sure we're your salary and interrupting the meeting. Yeah, it doesn't go over too no. well. <laughs> So it's being practical. Being practical Absolutely. and efficient. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Tara. Really appreciate the discussion. You're kindly welcome. Thanks so much for the invite. Enlo has been supporting women entrepreneurs in Newfoundland and Labrador for more than 20 years. It's your goal to succeed in business. It's ours to make sure you do. Rogers TV produces 100% local community programming. It's an exciting volunteer experience. We train hundreds of volunteers to work side by side with professional television producers. No experience required. If you'd like to volunteer, visit RogersTV.com. Beach Wellness Center is a 20,000 square foot health center that houses Allied Health, 
when I realized that I wanted to become an entrepreneur, I can't say that there was any any specific moment or something that I always knew. It really was something that I came to gradually. The key to my success, I don't think, is one simple answer, and it's not just to say, well, this is what I did, and this is why things have been so great. I have some personality traits that have definitely helped me along the way. I do accept risk, and I'm very comfortable taking risks. There's a lot of hope here, and I believe there's a lot of growth potential here, so I wanted to create something that said, we're here, and we're here to stay. Giving back to our community has always been really important to Vich Wellness Centre, and it's something that was uh, a priority for us from day one. We want to be a part of our community. We feel that we're an important part of our community. I'm inspired by many different things and, and many different people. Uh, here locally, there have been a couple business people that are very well known in the community, have been working for generations, so I find that very inspiring, and I try and emulate those behaviors where I can. There is a real value in being from here. You're rooted and connected in a way um, I don't believe you get from living in a larger center. But just the sheer level of connectedness that you can feel in a small community, every third or fourth face is a familiar face. Long term, what's next? I can't tell you, but I am certainly willing to uh, take whatever comes. Well, that was a jam-packed show full of great information on how to hire the right person for your organization, create a strong marketing strategy for your already established business to make sure that those customers keep coming. And we also learned how to be healthy while doing it all. For more information on this episode or other interviews that you've seen during our broadcast, you can check out our website at extrapreneurs.ca. We have special features, reference links, and information about our sponsors. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.